Hey gang, it's early December and it's starting to get cold. Oh. But it's time for fish soup. And I'm telling you, I've got just the perfect fish soup that I plan on making with some yellowtail. Years ago, I used to have a mechanic from Mexico. And his name was Manuel and he had a son named Roberto. And they were both from Michoacan. And we used to sh not only talk about how expensive my car was going to be, but we used to talk about food, food, food. I remember one of the recipes that I memorized that he told me about step by step was a fish soup recipe called caldo mitch. To make caldo mitch, all you needed was a big bowl full of fresh vegetables, some cut up fish, just like my yellowtail here, and your favorite soup pot. My name is Yanni, this is Fisherman's Belly, and we are on our way to make some Caldo Mitch. All right, gang, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna saute some onions, we're gonna saute some cabbage, we're gonna saute a Mexican sweet pepper, alongside a Mexican jalapeno. And then, I'm gonna grate three tomatoes and add that into the mix. Just watch. Okay, so I've got my favorite soup pot heating away, and the first thing I'm gonna do is add about three or four tablespoons of grapeseed oil. Perfect. Okay, and now it's time for the onions. Love the sound of that. The cabbage. My sweet pepper and my jalapeno. And now I'm gonna add a nice pinch of salt and some cracked black pepper. All right, I'm gonna let this saute for about three or four minutes. It's time to add the grated tomato. I love this soup, it's just so unusual, and I'm telling you, your whole kitchen just fills up with aromas. All right, gang, so my grated tomato has been sauteing along with the onions and the cabbage and the peppers for another four or five minutes. And now it's time to add water. And I've been adding just enough water so that I can check this out. Just so that I can fill up my pot three quarters of the way. And the reason is, is I've gotta leave room for all those vegetables and my fish. And I haven't told you yet, but we're gonna be adding garbanzo beans. Very traditional to add garbanzo beans to this caldo mitch. Okay, it's time for some cut up celery. Nice big chunks. It seems like with these Mexican soups, they're really rustic and they keep their vegetables nice and big. So there's my celery, and now for some cut up big chunks of carrots. Perfect. Okay, I've got some cut up bell peppers. That goes into this soup. I'm telling you, every vegetable in the world goes in this soup. It's so yummy. I've got some cut up big rounds of zucchini here. And I've got some cut up potatoes. Wow. All right gang, next we're gonna add two tablespoons of dry chicken stock. Now this is gonna add the flavor and the base of our soup, okay? After all, with this particular soup, we're not using a fish stock. We're actually gonna be using a chicken stock, but like I said, this is very traditional. Uno. Dos. The soup has been simmering for about 20 to 30 minutes. And I'll tell you how I know I am ready for the next step, and the next step is the fish and the garbanzo beans. But I'll tell you how I know I'm, I'm ready for the next step, or the final step, is because the thing that, the vegetable that's in here that's gonna take the longest to cook is the potatoes. And so once the potatoes are tender, then I know I'm ready for the next step. So 
I check on the potatoes. Here, I've taken the potato out. I've got a real sharp knife. And once I can go through that potato effortlessly, I know that my potatoes are cooked. And now it's time to add my fish, which are just going to cook in five minutes at the most, and the garbanzo beans. I've got a 15 ounce can of garbanzo beans, and these are already cooked, so they just are merely going to be heated. So now, I'm just going to add the garbanzo beans and the fish, and we'll be eating soon. Okay, here's my fish. Here's my yellowtail. Oh my god. And then I've got my garbanzo beans. Okay, I'll just let this cook for another five or ten minutes. Wow, you can see the fish is already starting to turn white. And then we'll be done. Time to turn off the fire. Traditionally, the Mexican soups, especially this soup, you add a bunch of garnish. And one of the things you add is the lime. So I'm going to squeeze two small limes into this soup. These are small limes, so if you've got a big limes, use one big lime. And like I said, it's traditional to squeeze the lime at the end, or even maybe even offer a little lime on the side. Wow, look at that. Oh, it smells so good. And now, for a little bit of cilantro, and a couple of wedges of lime. Oh my God, my stomach is growling like you wouldn't believe. Oh my God. Hey, if you guys are new, or if you're a regular and you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon. And that way you'll get a notification every time I create something new just like this. And by the way, it's the holiday season. If you guys are looking for some last minute gift ideas, a shirt, a sweater, a mug, with Fisherman's Belly all over it, check out our fan shop. It's on our website. Thanks for spending time with me today and learn how to make this soup. I hope you guys give it a try. Just reach into your refrigerator, grab some fish, and create this soup. Oh my God. We'll see you guys on the next one.